guys, I hope your week is going well. Today's video, in my opinion, is long overdue. It's one I've wanted to do for a long time. And it's because you guys asked me a fair amount, Dr. Dre, why is it that you and so many dermatologists continue to push for and recommend mineral sunscreen, mineral sunscreens, when year after year, Consumer Reports publishes their sunscreen recommendation list and mineral sunscreens always fail. They always tell us that mineral sunscreens aren't any good and we should choose chemical sunscreens. So what's, what's up with that? In today's video, hopefully I will clarify why you should ignore consumer reports and strongly consider a mineral sunscreen. Uh, dermatologists, we recommend mineral sunscreens for a few reasons. Mineral sunscreens, for those of you who aren't familiar, are sunscreens whose active ingredient is an inorganic ingredient called zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, or a combination of the two. Usually it's zinc alone or zinc and titanium dioxide. The reason we recommend these sunscreens are the following. First of all, they offer very broad spectrum coverage and protection against all the wavelengths of UV that can damage the skin. Not only do they protect you against UVB, the rays from the sun that burn you and that uh, cause mutations in your skin DNA that lead to skin cancer, but these ingredients also protect you against UVA. UVA are the rays that penetrate really deep into the skin. They don't necessarily burn you, but they annihilate the collagen in the deeper layers of your skin, lead to wrinkles, photoaging, and also suppress the immune system in the skin, compromising tumor surveillance and setting the stage for skin cancer development. Mineral sunscreen's a fantastic choice. When applied properly and used appropriately and used consistently and regularly, they can protect you from, from these damaging effects. We have good evidence from studies showing that mineral sunscreens do in fact protect against the uh, DNA mutations that occur upon exposure to UV, specifically something called cyclobutane dimers and something called P53 expression. Uh, we have studies showing that mineral sunscreens do in fact protect against this in real life on human skin. So those are, those are our reasons why we recommend mineral. Also, mineral sunscreens, unlike chemical sunscreens, are stable meaning they don't degrade on exposure to UV light. Yes, that is a definite shortcoming of chemical sunscreens that Consumer Reports always, always, always fails to mention to you, which I think is a really a disservice, is that the chemical sunscreens that they're promoting to you, they are not, they are not stable upon exposure to, to UV light, meaning the active ingredients in them starts to degrade once you go outside. So the awesome protection they afford once you put them on is dwindling. Whereas a mineral sunscreen, the protection it affords when you put it on stays intact so long as it's not rubbed off or sweat, you, you know, withholding sweat and that sort of thing. But the actual active ingredient does not degrade. So with a chemical sunscreen, not only do you lose sunscreen just from it getting wiped off, but the actual active ingredient protecting you degrades. So that is another reason why chemical sunscreens aren't always advocated for. Third reason is that mineral sunscreens are much easier to tolerate for sensitive skin and rosacea prone skin. Chemical sunscreens can burn, sting. A lot of people develop allergies to certain chemical sunscreens or become irritated by them. And for babies and young children whose skin barrier is not fully mature, they can be even more susceptible to irritation um, from chemical sunscreen. So we recommend choosing mineral sunscreens to protect your children. That's another reason. And then the, you know, the final reason to consider a mineral sunscreen is that mineral sunscreens seem to uh, be the most uh, environmentally conscious choice uh, in terms of we do have evidence, uh, at least in, from laboratory studies, that chemical sunscreen ingredients might potentially harm the health of the coral reef. So for those of you who are seeking uh, sunscreens that will have the least damaging consequences for oceanic environments, mineral sunscreens would be a better choice. And then lastly, you know, there's a recent fear mongering from the media about sunscreen chemicals in the blood. I have a video on this explaining why like that headline was over overhyped and misrepresented, uh, you know, so go back and watch that video. But if you are still fearful after that video of 
of the newer studies showing that chemical sunscreens are in fact absorbed. You know, choosing mineral sunscreens would be another another ding in favor of mineral sunscreens over chemicals that they're just not absorbed into the body at all. So, you know, if that, that upsets you and you don't you want to avoid that, then you're gonna want to choose a mineral sunscreen. So those are all the things in favor of minerals. So why is it then that they suck in consumer reports testing? Well here's the thing guys, here's what you have to appreciate is that consumer reports is not super transparent with how they go about testing and measuring and rating sunscreens. And from what they do disclose, they're kind of off. Uh, they're not doing things right, and they're not doing things the way the FDA mandates sunscreen manufacturers to, to do and to the, the protocols that need to be followed. First of all, the SPF testing that Consumer Reports does is, is fuzzy. SPF testing, if you're not familiar, is uh, what is done to figure out how well a product is going to protect you from a burn. That's, that's what that number means, SPF 30, 50, how well, how well the product is going to protect you against a burn. That's the entire, that's the entire premise of sunscreens, that they, the, the entire claim they can make is that it can protect you against a burn. So the way it's done is through something called minimal erythematous dose testing, where they take 10 subjects who are very fair complexion, either Fitzpat what's called Fitzpatrick photo type one or two, meaning these are people who, when you expose them to UV light, they're gonna get a sunburn. So they're, they're chosen specifically for this testing because you're trying to measure burn protection and you're not gonna be able to do that in somebody who doesn't burn super readily. So it's done in certain types of skin and a certain number of people and it is done uh, by applying on the back of these individuals uh, either sunscreen or no sunscreen to squares. The sunscreen is applied at a specific density, two milligrams per centimeter squared, is left on for about 15 minutes, and then the subjects are, are exposed to a dose of, of, of UV light. And what we're looking for is something called the minimal erythematous dose, and that is the minimal amount of light, of, of UV light required to, per, uh, to, to lead to barely perceptible pink light redness that fills the entire square that was exposed. Uh, and that is red at 24 hours after, after exposure. And so the SPF is the ratio of the um, side with sunscreen versus not sunscreen. And so the higher the dosage that you need to get to a burn, you know, on the protected side versus the unprotected side, you can see how that starts to, to give you an SPF. So that's kind of how it's done. But oddly enough, Consumer Reports doesn't exactly do it that way. They put the SP, they put the sunscreen on the subjects. They don't disclose at all how many subjects they use, their skin type, if they're following this protocol. They even state on their website, as a side note, Consumer Reports uses a testing protocol that is, quote, modeled on the FDA, what the FDA requires sunscreen manufacturers to use. But as is the case with other products we test that have government or industry standards, we use those standards as, quote, a benchmark and develop our own methodology. So here's the thing. This is a over-the-counter medication, not a vacuum cleaner, and they need to follow the rules of testing that have been mandated by the FDA in order to prove uh, failure or not. So they don't, they're not, it doesn't seem as though they're entirely following the protocol. And from what I can glean, they're definitely not. So for the SPF testing, they put the sunscreen on and then they submerge the individual in water and they do water resistance testing. They jump right into water resistance testing. Uh, so they're looking at sunscreens that make, also make claims not only to protect you against a burn, but that are resistant uh, to, to loss uh, in water, basically, that will hold up under water immersion. Uh, but they don't test the two things independently. So they put the sunscreen on and then they submerge the individual in water uh, and then they do the testing. And so that's, that's looking at two different variables. So for the FDA testing, SPF is done independently and then water resistance testing is done. They're not double stacked like Consumer Reports is doing. They're kind of mambo comboing them into one continual assay and saying that, oh, the SPF we get is not the same as the SPF that, it, that the product 
promotes, but they're not doing the testing the same way. So that's flaw number one. The other problem with their testing is how they do UVA. Uh, the FDA requires uh, for a sunscreen to be labeled as broad spectrum. It has to undergo critical wavelength testing to show a critical wavelength absorption of greater than 370 nanometers. But the consumer reports testing is done a little bit differently in that they do transmittance. So they coat plastic plates and they measure transmittance of UVA through them as a way to determine that. So it's not the same kind of test uh, as, as what the FDA requires. And it's actually slated to, to uh, misrepresent mineral sunscreens. And the reason for this, um, you won't find this necessarily published in any journal or anything, but I've talked to people in, in the industry, in sunscreen industry, who have to conduct this FDA testing, and they will tell you that one of the issues with, with the way that the Consumer Reports testing is, is being done is that it relies on a spectrophotometer through these plastic plates, and uh, my understanding from them is that the spectrophotometers actually uh, are calibrated to filter out anything that's particulate or powder-like. Uh, as, as background. Uh, and so mineral active ingredients like zinc and titanium dioxide to the spectrophotometer, the machine, are going to appear like background dust and get filtered out and subtracted from, from the measurement. And so using this assay is, sets you up, basically, it sets mineral sunscreens up for failure in that it's not going to adequately capture the UVA protection they afford. Uh, you know, and the, the way the FDA does it is on polymethyl methacrylate plates and you have, a, you have a critical wavelength. So that's really looking at an area of absorption under a curve of different wavelengths, not, not transmittance. So it's a little bit different um, and they're not, they're, not doing the same, they're not doing the same test. Uh, so that's, that's another obvious issue with it. And then they're just not transparent with how many with the participants that they do the do their SPF testing on, the number of them, their ages, their background skin type, are they photo type one, are they photo type two? Uh, there's no information on how the sunscreen is applied. Is it applied at two milligrams per centimeter square, or are you applying it like most consumers do, about a third of what you should be, and that's why you're getting a low a lower reading. That could also be that could also be the case. So they're just not super transparent, and you know I think for you as a consumer, you should not rely on consumer reports for your sunscreen and I think it you know the FDA actually should kind of step in and, and, sh and shut this down uh, I think it's inappropriate consumer reports should not be should not be rating an over-the-counter medication you know they should stick to vacuum cleaners and, on, and refrigerators the other thing that you should be aware of with consumer reports is there is, I suspect, financial bias that goes into who wins out in their reporting. So don't be surprised if that is, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, uh, that, you know, some sunscreen manufacturers pay to have the consumer report seal of approval on it. So just don't be misled. Consumer reports is not a reliable source for your sunscreen uh, sunscreen racks. Uh, I do strongly recommend, particularly, you know, for you guys, uh, a mineral sunscreen, zinc titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, that'll give you good UVB, UVA coverage. Uh, that's reliable and doesn't degrade. For those of you who watch me outside of the U.S., uh, sorry I should have said this in the beginning, but most of this is irrelevant to you because your chemical sunscreens are much more stable than ours are in these states. Uh, the FDA has not approved those, in, those ingredients that you guys have for inclusion in our sunscreens yet. So we're left with very few filters. The filters we have just are not stable like those in Europe and Japan and elsewhere in the world. So uh, for those of you who are watching me from, from other countries, a lot of this has nothing to do with you and your chemical sunscreens are, are stable. So, you know, hopefully the FDA will, you know, approve those at some point, but who knows? And then the last issue I will point out with the Consumer Reports uh, recommendations about the chemical sunscreens that consumers may be falsely reassured about when they follow the Consumer Reports recommendations is that chemical sunscreens that they're advocating for, I already told you guys the ingredients are not stable, right? They'll degrade when you go out and are exposed to sun. 
The ingredients that are most unstable in chemical sunscreens are those that protect you against UVA. UVA does not necessarily burn you, it's UVB. So in other words, you could have enough UVB protection from those chemical sunscreens to keep you from getting a burn, but not keep you from having your skin severely damaged by UVA because those other filters are degraded. Whereas the mineral counterpart that does not degrade, you have sustained protection against all the wavelengths, even the ones that you can't tell are harming you. UVB is the only UV ray that gives us, that gives us as, a, as a person any kind of acute sense that we've insulted our skin, and that's when we get a burn. Uh, so, you know, if you're following their recommendations and being like, yeah, I, I don't get burned, you may be damaging your skin through exposure to UVA through loss of that, the protection from those filters. So just be aware of that. That's why, that's why in my opinion, mineral sunscreen is a better choice, uh, particularly zinc oxide, because it protects against all those wavelengths and it doesn't degrade. But big take home point, sunscreen alone is not enough to protect your skin. You guys know this. If you've watched any number of my videos, you need to limit the duration of exposure to, to sun during peak hours. Don't stay out for a long period of time. You know, that is, that's a major problem. People put sunscreen on, they think it's a license to go out for a long period of time and they don't reapply it. Ugh, that's, that's a setup for failure right there in and of itself. Uh, so don't just rely on sunscreen. Be, you know, conscientious of how long you're out and put other, other measures into place. Wear a broad brimmed hat, uh, sun protective clothing, long sleeves, and go inside when it's peak sun exposure hours in midday sun. Uh, you don't want to get, not only do you not want to get a burn, but the sun is very strong. And the dosage of UVA that you get from the sun is much greater than the dosage of UVB that you get. The dosage that burns you, the, 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 the types of UV that burn you are not even the majority of the sun that hits your skin. The majority of the sun that hits your skin is the one that, that, that ages your skin, damages the supportive framework, work, annihilates your collagen, suppresses your immune system, and you have no clue it's doing any of this until you're 40, 50, 30, and you've got wrinkles, sagging skin, and you're developing pre-skin cancers, and then it's a little too late. Um, so, you know, protecting your skin from the sun is kind of multiple behaviors, and sunscreen alone is definitely not enough. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I'm sure it was long. I've struggled with how to make this video for quite some time. And so I hope it was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.